Hello, good evening. Ash from London here with another quick, fun top ten. And yes, we've gone all heavy metal tonight. I'm wearing my uh, formal heavy metal attire, as you can see. Um, it's a bit, ooh. I haven't worried for a while. It's one of those things I don't tend to get to wear very often these days. Uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, tonight heavy metal. I was thinking uh, the reason I'm doing this video because I realised the 22nd of June is the the anniversary of the Big Four uh, recording their D live DVD in um, uh, Bulgaria, uh, 2010. So it's the 11th anniversary of, um, of the uh, recording of that. It was released later the same year. So I thought, oh, why not do a quick, a quick uh, top 10 appreciation of the Big Four, the Big Four of thrash metal. For those of you who don't know, uh, the Big Four were, of course, Metallica, Megadeth and Slayer from the west coast of the US and Anthrax who um, hail from New York on the east coast they were all just sort of like the, the forefront of a thrash metal movement in the um, uh, early to mid 80s and um, apart from Slayer and they're all still going pretty strong today I mean Slayer um, wound up when was it the, I saw them on their farewell tour in 2019 so they've kind of um, you know they've kind of retired from the business or so they say we, we hear this so many times with people going but um so far they're um they're um, keeping to their word uh so yeah big four i'm, I'm just doing about 10 albums here from the big four and um some of them will have you will have seen already and if you anyone saw my, my metallica top 10 or metallica album ranking actually um a while ago uh, there'll be some familiar albums here so if you want to i won't be going to too much depth with a lot of these albums, just a, just a bit of fun this really. And oh by the way, talking about the patches, if you look at this, anyone saw my um, typographical album sleeves the other day, that's that was, like I was saying, the Black Sabbath logo is the one that was off the Master of Reality album that is featured quite often now, like I say, on patches and things, so there you go, there's an example of that. Okay, top ten of the big four, here we go. Uh, number ten, we start with Megadeth, is in number ten. And the album is So Far, So Good, So What, from 1988. Now, this was their third release, I think. Was it their third? Yeah, third release. And uh, this is the one that kind of got them on the map, really. And um, I just really, when I first really got into them, I was kind of in, because uh, I've been to heavy metal long before it was called heavy metal, and uh, a lot of the thrash stuff uh, took me a while to go. I got into Metallica first, got into them straight away. Megadeth weren't far behind, of course, because Dave Mustaine was um, a member of Metallica originally. So, um, but yeah, this was just really great. I got into got into the band on this album pretty much. I was familiar with the earlier stuff, but this is the one that tipped me over the edge. Uh, saw them twice on the tour, which was pretty good. Once at a festival and once at their own show in a theatre. Uh, it's got some good tracks on it. Opens up with the brilliant Into the Lungs of Hell instrumental, which is really really cool. Um, very very bombastic, dramatic, you know, just uh, into the lungs of hell. It's a bombastic title, and I was very disappointed we didn't open the show with it because I was I thought it was a cracking um, show opener that, but we didn't. They opened up with the second track in the set, the world of fire, which is um, still a pretty good track. Uh, they, they do a cover of the Sex Pistols Anarchy, Anarchy in the UK um, on on side one, which is, I think is a bit of a throwaway. Really, it's not a particularly great version. Uh, Sex Pistols, Steve Jones guests on guitar, but you would never really tell, to be honest. Mary Jane's uh, is a pretty good track. I'll close this side one. Side two just rip roars through. Side two is just brilliant. 502, In My Darkest Hour, Liar, and then the brilliant hook in the mouth at the end, which is really, really cool. Um, the lineup on Dead Mustaine, of course, is the only constant member of Megadeth. Uh, this had Jeff Young on um backup guitar or twin lead guitar and um Chuck Bear I can't pronounce his name, Bala Beeler on drums. I think it's the only album they, they appeared on actually. Dave Ellison and long term bass player was on this album. But um yeah really good and it features old uh, the mascot there, Vic Rattlehead, who's uh, I think it must have been a bit inspired by uh, Iron Maiden and their Eddie the Eddie mascot. Um Vic doesn't appear on all the albums but he appears on quite a few of them. He's on that one which is, I think, is quite a cool car. I've got this annoying sticker on the front. I can't get the thing off. It, uh, it's, um, you could enter a um, competition to win a Jackson guitar and a uh, competition with them. She was inside. And there's also a colour poster. And I never, never been able to get the sticker off. And too too frightened to um, tear the cover out. Anyway, there you go. Megadeth from 88. Number 10 in my Big Four Top 10. My Big Four Big 10. Okay, next up we've got Anthrax at number 9. Spreading the Disease from 1985. This was their second album and the first um, of the classic lineup. 
which uh, this is the first one to feature jo Joey Belladonna on lead vocals, and uh, Frank Bello on bass. He joined replacing founder member uh, Dan Lacker. Um, this is just great. Um, I'm not quite sure about the sleeves. Sleeves are strange. That's the problem with heavy metal. Some sleeves are just just leave me a bit lost sometimes. But this is it's kind of all right. But nice shot of the tread of his boots there. But uh, well, painting or whatever. But um, yeah, so this is a great album. This is where the, the, the anthemic kind of uh, anthrax stuff came in. There's some classic anthrax tracks on here. Uh, AIR, of course, Lone Justice, Madhouse, one of their um, live favourites. Uh, on side, side two, you've got uh, where are we? Aftershock, Armed and Dangerous. Actually, actually, the last three tracks on side two, Armed and Dangerous, Medusa and Gung Ho, just absolute concert staples. They're really, really um, out there all the time. And there's a band on the back there. There's a bit of a boring back sleeve, but... Um, I think I think that these albums these albums are just kind of like pushed out pretty quick and uh, fairly on a low budget. They're on uh, Music for Nations at the time, which is the same label Metallica on it um, at the time. So the budgets weren't too high, but they were just pressing on. They're a very hard working band, and um, yeah, this was great. I did I didn't get to see them around this time. I got into Anthrax um, early than Megadeth. I kind of got them in around about the time of. Um, the the third album I think it was really I really got into it. I was aware of this and the tracks were always played at the rock clubs and uh, I had the album but I just never made the effort to go and see them for some reason I don't know why and then of course I famously missed them when they were supporting uh, Metallica on the Master of Puppets tour but that's another story so anyhow number uh, nine in my uh, uh, big four big ten Anthrax spreading the disease from 1985 okay uh, okay on to Slayer now um Slayer, I got into oh, 80, 86, 85, 86, around then. And um, a lot of their albums, so the thing with Slayer is there was never there was never a lot of light and dark with Slayer. What you got was what you got. I mean, I do like them, um, but a lot of the time you think, oh, crikey, this is a bit too much. But um, this album, this is one of their later albums, this is their um, penultimate album release, and... Uh, I just really got back into them again with this. This came out in uh, 2009. It's called Will Painted, Will Painted Blood. And I thought it was fantastic. A real return to form for them. It's the, the classic lineup uh, back together again. Because um, the, the drummer, um, Dave Lombardo, had left in the early 90s and then he came back for a couple of albums and then left again. <laughs> but uh, with him back on board, it was just absolutely, um, I thought, oh, it's brilliant. Uh, this is the last album with him, actually. And also, sadly, the last album with Jeff Hanneman, founding um, one, of, one of the uh, main guitarists, along with um, Kerry King and Jeff Hanneman. They were, they were the two, um, two guitarists with the band. Jeff Hanneman sadly died in um, 2013. The band carried on, of course, for another album. And like I say, I saw the Farewell Tour. The Farewell Tour was great. Um, 2019, they were supported by Anthrax, <laughs> which was great. Real, a real... real um, Great double up that night, but um, that was that was really really good. But um, I thought, yeah, that was a great album. This this is the um, special limited edition. As you can see, the album artwork is quite bloody, and uh, it is actually the world. It's a map of the world with blood splattered all over it, as you can see. That's uh, yeah, like I say, this is the um, uh, limited edition. Is it the one that I don't never keep it what they call limited edition. This one, yeah, and it's got a DVD comes with it as well. There's a spread in the middle, which is quite nice. But a uh, title track on this, as soon as I heard the title track, I was just, that was it. I thought, crack it, the title track is brilliant. I used about four songs with the riffs in it. It's just absolutely amazing. And, um, yeah, just got really got back into them again. So, Because um, I had a bit of a lull. With, I was into them in the early days, in the 80s, and I had a bit of a lull. I still saw them. I mean, these four bands, I've seen them all many times, uh, including Slayer. And, um, uh, yeah, just just really good. Good, good, good live band, very intense live band. Very loud, of course. They're all very loud. But anyway, there you go. Slayer, Will Penty Blood, number eight in my big four, big ten. Okay, uh, number seven, back to Megadeth. And um, this is the, I think this is their biggest selling album, actually. It came out in 1992. It's called Countdown to Extinction. And, of course, Vic Rattlehead doesn't appear on this sleeve. Um, but, yeah, this was brilliant. This was, um, I mean, the... The momentum was really picking up with this, the previous album, which was pretty good, and then this one, this is in the same line. This this is a later release of it, so I've got here with some bonus tracks on. A couple of skulls there on the back being turned up at the end. But yeah, this, this was just brilliant. Skin in My Teeth, Symphony of Destruction, which is a classic Megadeth track. Uh, Sweating Bullets, some great stuff. Can't answer, extinction, uh, extinction title track. High Speed Dirt, just brilliant. Ashes in Your Mouth, 
great great album and uh, they really got the you know, really kept it going with this um i can't remember whether i saw them around this time because uh, around about the early 90s i was traveling quite a lot so i never got to see a lot of the gigs because um, the countries i was going these bands weren't touring a lot of the countries but um yeah i've seen them a few times since um they can't so when they came to new zealand uh saw them back in the uk at uh, various festivals and um i will, will make the effort to see them again if they uh, ever if i'm ever in the same in the same field as they are so this was a you know this is a great album this was the um the classic album with uh, nick menza on drums the late mix nick menza he sadly passed away recently and matthew matthew Fiel, um F- uh, friedman on on uh, second guitar so i'll say second on, on guitar say second guitar i was assume dave dave mustaine's first guitar uh, but anyway, there you go. Megadeth's um, Countdown to Extinction, number seven in my big four, big ten. Okay, now, oh, got to have some Metallica in here, haven't we? Um, this, no, this was their, um, the album I got into them with, really, uh, 1985, Arrival Lightning, which I mentioned, um, of course, in my Metallica album ranking. Brilliant album. This was the uh, one of the three, their first of the um, the legendary Cliff Burton era lineup, and uh, this was just. I think this this album alone really put um, thrash metal on the map. To be honest, uh, Kill 'Em All, the first album was uh, was really good, but I think in terms of um, sales and recognition, and uh, spreading the word, shall we say, killer tracks on here: Fight Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning, For Whom the Bell Toll, Fade to Black, and that's just side one. <laughs> you have to have a you have to have a break and <laughs> turn it over. Uh, Trapped Under Ice, Escape, Creeping Death, which is a classic. Album. Always a classic um, concert opener. They opened. Uh, I was very happy they opened Glastonbury when they had the headline Glastonbury with that. Even though I wasn't there, I saw it on TV and thought, oh, "Creeping Death." Uh, they got to because Glastonbury wasn't really. Um, they weren't really playing to a home team, if you know what I mean. And Creeping Death, that would be at the. Everyone's got to see Metallica open with that number because it's just the one to, to open with, really. And then of course the instrumental Call of Cthulhu closing track, which is uh, just epic, epic stuff. And there they are. The boys, so yeah, so anyway, has to be in here. Arrival Lightning from Metallica at uh, number six in my big four, big ten. Okay, number five, uh, back to Slayer now. The big one for Slayer was always Rain in Blood, which was the one that, uh, that I think was that was their third release that put them on the map. It was a uh, famously um, produced by Rick Rubin, released on a Def, uh, Def Jam, I think it was Def Jam label, yeah, because this one's the same label, and uh, there was deliberately. Trying to get to make it the heaviest heavy metal album ever recorded, and it was a big success and great. I mean, I've got that; it's a great album. But I just preferred this one, the follow-up, "South of Heaven," which uh, was 1986. Um, sorry, hang on, 1988. Sorry, <laughs> get me get me dates mixed up here. And I thought I thought this was really good. It had a, there's a lot more to it, a lot of depth to it. Um, it is a heavy album. It's a bloody heavy album, and it's, it's got some. It's got some great tracks on title track. It opens it's really, really good. Very sort of symphonic, driving. Almost like, almost like heavy classical music almost. Uh, Silence Green behind the Crooked Cross, which is a great track. I love that track. Um, Mandatory Suicide, which uh, got into. I mean, lyrically, the Slayer were always getting into a lot of trouble over their lyrics and, and song titles and stuff. Uh, Ghost of War, pretty, pretty good track. Read Between the Lies. Cleanse the Soul, Aggress- Dissident Aggressor, which is a um, Judas Priest song. They covered Judas Priest on this, so um, I thought that, thought that was pretty good. That perks my intro. But this, this is the one that I really go into Slayer with, and uh, I saw them on this tour. And uh, they were supported by Nuclear Assault, who are another... That was, that was a band formed by Dan Leica, who'd left Anthrax, so it was another thrash-era band that sort of like didn't quite make the the big, big time, but they were uh, all around, so... Um, yeah, so during the mid '80s, I saw all these bands, and they all came to the, the studio in the theatre circuit, and it was great. And they all brought along really good support bands with them. So um, just, just great, great time to be into heavy metal. Really, it's a kind, of, kind of because we'd have the um, the new wave of British heavy metal thing was kind of like winding down a bit, and then of course th- all this stuff came along from the states, and it was just amazing. It's really, really good. So it was just, oh, just very exciting times. Very exciting times indeed. Very. Um, Interesting sleeve work, very, very Slayer there, very typical, lots of uh, death and schools, very Her- Hieronymus Bosch inspired. But there's the boys on the back, the classic lineup. Uh, Tom Araya, of course, here on the um, this guy here. I was certainly left or right here, the bass, bass player and kind of leader, really, ly- lyricist. Um, but um, that's when Kerry King had hair. <laughs> 
Back in those, look, back, they're looking very youthful there, aren't they? But anyway, there we go. That's uh, 1998 South of Heaven from Slayer, number five in my uh, big four top ten. Okay, back to Metallica, and we have uh, And Justice for All at number four. Uh, again, go and see my um, video on um, uh, Metallica albums. You'll find out more about that. This was the the best album from the um, the second era, really. The um, Jason Newstead era, of course, after the sad death of um, Cliff Burton. Uh, this was the first one with Jason, actually. And it, was just, it was just brilliant. It was a double album on vinyl, um, or crammed onto a single disc on CD. I did have it on vinyl originally, but one of those things, I changed it for CD and now waiting to get it um, get it back on vinyl again, basically. Um, problem is, though, this is a bit rather expensive at the moment, these reissued vinyl Metallica albums. So um, It would be nice to get the original back, to be honest, on the original label. It was on them. Uh, the Electra label. Uh, I think now it's on the Blackened label, which is Metallica's own label, which is fair enough. I mean, you know, but um, but anyway, it's um, great, just a classic album, really. Uh, Blackened and Justice for All Time, the track Eye of the Beholder, the classic one, which was their big, big, um, big single, Shorty Straw, Harvester of Sorrow, which was uh, quite a big hit single in the UK, strangely enough. Um, I was quite surprised to release that as a single. I mean, it's uh, nearly six minutes long and quite. Clunky kind of, it's not really a good good release for a single, but it got him a charts, got him a top twenty, did pretty well. Afraid ends of sanity. To live is to die, which is the classic epic um, instrumental, pretty much. It's got a few spoken word bit in the middle, written by Cliff Burton, um, and then dies Eve, the final track, which is the shortest track at five minutes twelve. Uh, maybe I should release that as a single instead. But anyway, there we go. The Unjustice for All album from uh, nineteen eighty eight, Metallica. Number four in my big four, big ten. Okay, top top three now. Now this was this was one album I was really obsessed with when it came out. This is one that really tipped me way over the edge with Anthrax. Uh, Anthrax, so Among the Living from 1987. It's a brilliant album. Uh, to be honest, I don't listen to it as much nowadays. But at the time, when the year it came out, it was just something that's so fresh and so exciting. I just absolutely loved it. Uh, it was committed. I went travelling. I actually went travelling in Morocco, of all places, and took this on. Uh, this is one of the albums I have on my Walkman, and I just played it to death the whole. I think my mates were getting a bit tired, <laughs> tired of me because you could still hear. I had a lot loud. They, they could still hear it. Listen to that bloody album again. And there's one um, one interesting story. Uh, well, I found it interesting anyway. Is, um, I was on a train. Where were we going to? We're going from Fez to somewhere, or Casablanca, or somewhere on the, on this train. And uh, there's one of the locals was sitting in, in, in the railway carriage with us, and he was interested to what, you know, curious about what I was listening to. So we can have a listen if you want. So he put it on, and his face was an absolute picture. Like, so um, I don't know what happened to him. He, um, he he said, "Oh yeah, very, very, very good, very loud." And uh, that was that. So um, hopefully it didn't traumatize him too much. But uh, there we go. But this is just brilliant. It's got some classic Anthrax songs on here. You got the title track, "Caught in a Mosh," "I Am the Law." Based on the UK um, comic strip Judge Dredd, uh, Ethel Nick, Ethel Fessin, NFL. That was, uh, that was my one of my favourite tracks. Skeleton in the Closet, one of the lesser tracks on here. And side two is uh, in Indians, which was one of their um, singles. One World, ADI Horror Retail, Imitation of Life. But um, I think with the um, side one, the first four tracks on side one, it just absolutely steamrollers, absolutely brilliant. There are the boys on the uh, on the New York subway. Good shot of the band there. The second and the classic lineup. This was the one that followed and um, spreading the disease. And uh, I actually saw them. Um, I saw Anthrax uh, on the tour for this three times. Uh, I thought they were brilliant. They were supported by Testaments, which is another one of the thrash metal bands of the era. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, really, 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 really good. Um, I briefly met Scott Ian because I saw him at a festival where I had a backstage pass one of them and I briefly bumped into Scott Ian but he seemed too interested in talking about Judge Dredd the, the character because of course he's a British comic strip and he was over in, in the UK and he was, he was a big big comic fan big fun comic guy but uh, yeah just absolutely brilliant loved it um, now then um, I did buy the um, remaster later that came out so I'm not quite sure what year this came out um 2009 came out the um, remastered DVD, which uh, sorry CD, which also has a DVD with it, which and they released a, a video, uh, a couple of shots of the band in there. They released a video on the uh, UK tour in 1987 at London Hammersmith Odeon, and uh, the, this is now included on this uh, special re-release. There's also a few extra tracks on here. 
We have the rap track I Am The Law was a, around about the same time. Um, sorry, not I Am The Law. I Am The Man. Uh, was a, was a, because uh, Anthrax were kind of like quite... Um, they were, um, what's the word? They were one of the first bands to bring hip hop into metal, to be honest. They're big fans of Public Enemy, and they actually released a record with Public Enemy. And um, I'm the Man was one that they, did. they used to do live, and then they released it as a single. Um, so that's, uh, that was pretty interesting. But yeah, the DVD is really good. Slightly, it's a bit, it's slightly dated the way it's filmed at the moment. I mean, this was in 1987, of course, and things have moved on a bit since then. But it's, uh, that's definitely worth investigating for all the uh, Anthrax fans out there. Uh, so that was uh, Anthrax and Mummy Living, 1987. And uh, yeah, got to number two in this uh, big four top ten. And uh, back to Megadeth, the classic Rustin Peace piece, which is just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, this is when I realised, oh, Megadeth are here to stay. You know, it's like absolutely brilliant album. Actually, I didn't really get into it. I was off travelling again. And, uh, this is one I actually bought on uh, one of those unofficial D. Um, Cassettes, so it was a bit of a crappy recording. So I was, I was traveling around listening, listening to it. I was in Australia actually when I got into this, and uh, it's just top to bottom, just doesn't doesn't let up. Holy Walls, Punishment Jew, Hangar 18. Uh, Hangar 18 has been a bit of a um, concert opener for them recently, actually. Last time I saw them, they opened up that, which was really good. Take No Prisoners, Five Magics, Poison Was a Cure, Lucretia, Tornado of Souls, Dawn Patrol, and the brilliant Rust in Peace, Polaris, and just close the album. It just, just doesn't let up the whole, you know. The, all the way through. You've got a couple of quiet bits, but um, not a lot, to be honest. It's uh, it's really rip roars through as their line same lineup as um, Countdown to Extinction. So um, there's the boys again there, and uh, there's old Vic Rattlehead on the front there with some world leaders behind him and a strange alien in the in the casket there. But yeah, absolutely brilliant album. Um, love it to death. 1990, this one came out. So um, that's number two in my big four, big ten. Rust in Peace and Megadeth. Uh, so number one is obvious <laughs> for anyone who saw my, if anyone who saw my Metallica rundown and anyone who saw my album, best favourite albums of all time, has to be Master of Puppets. So um, there you go. So go to either of those um, videos to find out more about Master of Puppets, the, the best of the classic era, the Cliff Burton era. One of the best albums ever recorded of any genre, really. Um, so definitely one of my favourites and it's, it's one of those yeah, where sometimes you think oh am I still into this play it again and I think yes I still am it's just absolutely fantastic album so uh, there and that is my number one um, big four album Me uh, Metallica Master of Puppets from 1986 and of course I have to show you this because this is what this uh, video is all about big four DVD live in um, Bulgaria That's Sof Sofia in Bulgaria um, recorded on what date was it it was in June June 22nd, 2010. Uh, there's a track listing on the back. The running orders at Anthrax came on first, then Megadeth, then Slayer, then Metallica. And then most of the members from all four bands came on for an encore and did a cover of um, Am I Evil? The old um, Diamond Head song. Because of course Diamond Head is one of the new heavy British heavy metal bands that kind of influence a lot of these kind of bands from the States. So that, 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 that was quite a nice, nice tribute. But uh, all four bands are, on, are absolutely on fire on this. It's a double double DVD. It's really good. You've got the, the full set list. Lots of backstage stuff going on. And, uh, yeah, it's just really good fun. You can tell the boys, are, all four bands, are really having a great time there. It rains a bit, I think, I think during Megadeth's set. Because they, they were talking about that. Who, who's going to get the, the wet weather today? And I think Meg Megadeth cops it. And then on the front, you see, they had um, special limited edition Big Four guitar picks issued. So, um, they, I think I'm not quite sure the band were using them, but I think they came as a bit of a. I know I never got one. I thought you might get one with the DVD, but no, I think they were they were available somewhere. I was just given out or somewhere. So there's over five hours of live footage on here, uh, as well as the uh, backstage stuff. So um, really, really good. That's well, well worth well worth investing in for any heavy metal fan. And uh, there we go. So that's that. That's my big four, big ten. Oh, well, we enjoyed that. That was a bit of fun, really. I think I said everything I needed to do. I mean, didn't make many notes this time, just had the years down, even though I got those wrong a couple of times. So, uh, never mind. Okay, um, that's me finished tonight. Um, I'm going to take this off. <laughs> it's going to get a bit warm. Um, yeah, I'll be back again with some more top tens and uh, album rankings and whatnot soon. So, um, once again, thank you for being there. And I'll say bye for now. What was that one, is it? That way. Bye for now. <laughs>